All right, so so far we have utilized Git on our local computer, and it's doing just fine. I don't need to do anything else. It is keeping track of my versions, and I can do everything that Git offers in that local directory. But if I want to move to the next level, I'm going to utilize something called GitHub, which is a repo. Um, it's a, a cloud repository. And so Git and GitHub are not the same things. We use Git to do our versioning, but we can store our versioned project, our project that has been um, uh, kept a watchful eye by Git. We can put all of that version history up on a cloud service of repos, which is called, one of the repos is called GitHub. There's another one called Bitbucket, which is popular, and I think there's some other ones as well. But GitHub is the one that we're going to be using. And so what I'd like you to do is, or if you want to follow along, is go to github.com and let's sign up. And so we're going to use, you can, I've got a temporary email, so hopefully I can walk through with this. Uh, which is kind of a funny little email, but I'm going to try and walk you through. Thank you for groaning in the background, dog. So I have a temporary, let's see if I can do this. JEL25 is available. Perfect. So that's who I'm going to be for this video, just to walk through. Uh, that is the email that I randomly got, an email generator, and I'll put a password and sign up for GitHub. Okay, now let's not save it. Oh, uh, there are problems creating your account. Password is weak. Oh, I had a weak password. What do you know? All right, so let's try something else. Let's try, hopefully you'll like that one. Do not send me any information. I don't need that. All right, and so I've not done this in a long time, so that's why I thought I'd follow through with it here. Please solve the puzzle so we know you are a real person. Okay, touch the arrows to roll the image. That's interesting. Okay, this is fun. I feel like, oh good, I passed. So can I create the account? Yay, don't save. And so welcome to GitHub. What kind of work do you do mainly? Um, I'm a student. That's probably what you're going to be doing. Uh, how much programming experience do you have? Well, I think you guys have a lot of programming experience. You wouldn't be here. What do you plan to use GitHub for? Learn Git and GitHub, host a project. Let's host a project. All right, I am interested in languages, frameworks, and industries. Languages, I'll just copy what they did. Frameworks, frameworks, good. Okay, great. Can I finish? This has changed a lot since the first time I've done it. So now we want to verify our email, so we need to go to that address. And I'm going to go and see if that address was received. I got it. I'm going to click on it. Sometimes it goes into your spam or other box, so make sure that you check that. I'm going to hit verify, my verify link, and this is what I ended up with. What do you want to do first? Okay, so let's create a repository. Look at that, and this is where I hoped we would be eventually. So that whole login is new, so that was kind of fun to go through. Um, so anyway, so we'll use this repo now. And this is where I meant to go, so now this looks like familiar territory. All right, so what we're going to do is we're creating a new repository. So let me close out this other stuff here so we're good to go. All right, and so remember that we created a local repository already. So we're now creating a repository that we can keep in the cloud. So we want to move our local repo repository up to our GitHub repository. So it's asking us to give it a name, and it can be the same name that you did here. Maybe I'll keep the names the same just for, I think I'm going to change the name just for a visual. So it can be whatever you want it to be, obviously. It can match your local repo, or it can be a new name. So I'm going to do, uh, example, GitHub. I don't know. The description is optional. You can choose to have your repo public, meaning it is available for anybody to see. If you make it private, that's available just to you, obviously. So I'm going to make mine public. And then, let's see, initialize this repository with a readme. Well, did we already do that? We did, didn't we? We did a git init, and we created a readme.md, which I promised you I was going to show you what that does, and I will in a minute. 
So if you're creating a repository for the very first time, in other words, we created this repository in our local folder, and we're going to we're going to use this repository as a storage for our local repository. So we've already created one. You only want to initialize that repository once. If you create the repository for the very first time in GitHub and use that as your starting point, then you're going to want to initialize it. But we've already done it, so do not check this now. Git ignore is an option if you are uh, have a lot of files that you don't want to upload, and that's something we'll deal with in another video. So for now, I'm just going to ignore the git ignore. All right, so at this point, I think we're good. I'm going to click on repository, and things are going to move. All right, so the first screen we've, we've been taken to is in our scenario. In this scenario, we have created a local repository, and we want to move all of that repository up to our cloud repository to GitHub. And so if we look at what's provided here, quick setup, the because we didn't initialize the repository when we created it here on GitHub, it's letting us know that you should have initialized and created a readme file someplace else, which we did. And so that's what these commands are um, doing. So if you echo a command on the command line and then you, uh, here's the string that you would echo to that would echo it or print it out to a readme.md file. Well, we did that in Visual Studio Code. In that repository, which we did here, you're going to want to do a git init, which we've done. Git add, we've done more than just add the readme file. We actually did the asterisk so we can include our index.html. So we've done that. We've also done our first commit. We called it initial commit, but it's just a message. So whatever you put in there is fine. And we have done that. So we have already done these first four steps. So the next step is this right here. And what this particular line is doing is, let me see if I can point some of these things out. This URL is the URL to the GitHub repository that we just created. So if you give this address, this URL to a potential employer or to a teacher for an assignment or what have you, that is going to bring them to your repo. And we'll see more of what that's going to look like when we move our code up there, when we push our code up there. So this is our address. This is our URL to this particular repo. And so here's the command for us to link our local repository with our GitHub repository. In other words, I'm just going to copy this all, do a copy here. And I'm going to come in here to my command prompt and paste that in. And so what I'm doing is, is literally, doesn't look like I did anything, but I've just committed a, uh, not committed, I've just created a line, a link between my local repository so it knows how to find my GitHub repository. And if I want to verify that, I can type in git remote, and I'm going to do a dash V for verbose to be more, to so it'll print more out. You can do it without, oops, I spelled remote wrong, git remote remote dash v and now you'll see that this uh, this repository knows where github's repository the same repository is remember we're trying to link these two repos together as if they're one and so the idea here is this will be like in the powerpoints in the very beginning this will be our central repository and so it can um, be where all of our code is stored and then we can pull it down to our local folder or if we go to school we can I'll show you how we do all of that in a moment but for now we'll just recognize that we've now made a connection between our local computer our local project and our github uh, repository and so this line then is how we move we call it push we're going to push our code because our local repository has some index and and some styling and so forth so we're going to push our code to github and that's what this line is doing. And so if I, and uh, just one more thing to let you know, origin is a name, a variable name, or a standard name for your GitHub repository. And master, we already saw that as our master branch on our local folders, our local repo. So git push, dash u simply means upstream. Mm, we'll deal with that for the moment. And then origin is push to the origin, our GitHub account, from our master branch. And so I'm just going to paste that code in here and let's see if things happen. 
Now, I believe the very first time you do this, you should be, yep, off screen. You should be prompted with your GitHub credentials. And once you do this the first time, you shouldn't be uh, forced to or asked to do it again. So now I have to remember what my GitHub credentials were. And since this was sort of a made up account, hopefully I remember. Uh, I think I did J-A-E-L 25. I had to get a stronger password. Let's see what happens. And then once we do that, sure enough, that worked. Okay. Phew, no pressure. So there's a bunch of things that happened and you can see that uh, it's done. It looks like it did brancher, branch master set to track remote branch master from origin. Okay, not sure what all that means, but it wasn't an error message, that's for sure. So now I'm gonna come back to my GitHub account and I'm going to refresh it. And you should see your project you should see, let's see, first of all, here's our readme file. So this is the point of the readme. By default, readme.md is a file that is, uh, it's like a uh, description of this repo. So if you go to any public repo, you will see at the very minimum, a readme file that has maybe the name of the project and the author. And more times than not, you're gonna see a whole bunch more information about the code that is included in that repo, like directions how to install it, or how do you utilize it, or that kind of a thing. So you might have seen this before and not even known what it was. So now you know, it's a readme file. And so you, you can see that the pound sign, the hashtag, single one, made a like an H1 tag. And then the double hashtag, maybe like a uh, H2 tag or something like that. And you can go in here and edit this and put, uh, you know, HTML if you want. So this is just an HTML page. But that's the purpose of the readme file. And every repo that you create for the first time should be initialized. And it should contain a readme file. So we've seen that in progress. This is the current code that has been pushed up to the repo. Uh, you can click on the file name and see more of that particular code. Great. I can also look at the commits. Remember we had two commits. So if I click on the word commits, I will see in fact both of those commits and that's where those messages come into play. You can see the messages here. This is the most current commit. You'll see the author. So when you had, when you put in the author name, the author name is getting appended to this commit. So if we had five people working on this project, then I could see, you know, who did what, and also a time frame of when that got committed. You should be able to click on, I believe it's this tag, and then you should see a, a little visual of you can do it unified or you can do it split. I think split's a little bit easier for me. But the point is that you should be able to see side by side the changes from the original commit so this was the original file, and in this particular commit, there was some uh, green, which means insertion. And so I can see that I added some things. So if you modified something, it would be highlighted in yellow, and if you deleted it, it would be highlighted in red. So you can see the differences between those particular um, commits. So that can be handy. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to see if there's anything else that I admit. If you have a team working on it, so if I had more than one contributor, you could click on this little item and it would tell you a little bit more about each participant's, each commit, uh, each contributor's participation. So it's a way to track team involvement on a project. So lots of good information that's being um, provided in this particular GitHub account. But anyway, it gets you a good idea. We have one branch, we have one branch here, so no, nothing has been branched out at this point. And I think we're good to go with this example. So in this video, we successfully created a GitHub account. We were able to utilize our clone. So we cloned, oh, we didn't do that yet. Sorry, wrong video. So what did we do? We pushed our, we did the remote, right? So we, uh, uh, use the remote command, git remote to, let's see, where is that? Here, sorry, wrong video, I got ahead of myself. We use the git remote add command in order to make a link between our local repository and our GitHub repository. And then we successfully pushed our data, our, our current um, repo, up to GitHub's repo. So now, ideally, this will be our master 
repo, if you will. So we will see in another video how we might be able to pull that data into another computer and maintain that chain of uh, history. All right, so see you in the next video.